attitude is something larger than our feelings or our thoughts or our body. It's this amalgam of our, um, our approach to something, our being toward it. And we're going to go into that later. But there's nothing more primal than the experience of us and them. And there's one kind of attitude that we have about us. And, and just feel the difference in, in this moment, the difference between the feeling of us and the feeling of them. And so we're talking tonight about the focusing attitude, this attitude of receptivity and openness, curiosity, welcome. And we're talking about the experience of, of us and them in relation to this focusing attitude. We want to start with an attunement that Pat Omidian did, reading the, the guest house. And we're just going to start with the recording of that poem. And I'd like you to listen to it as an attunement, because this poem is about welcoming everything. And that's really what the focusing attitude is. It's this attitude of welcome. And we kind of get mixed up and say, oh, but I can't welcome cruelty. I can't welcome this and that. We're not agreeing or condoning or going along with in the focusing attitude. We're welcoming all of what is, all of what is, because what is isn't just what is. What is in Jean's philosophy is always implying, it's always going, it's going somewhere. So we're catching, when we, when we encounter something, we're catching a little photograph of something. But it's part of this much, much longer, eons long video. And we have to know that it's going somewhere. So let's listen to this poem with the sort of feeling of Rumi's focusing attitude about welcoming everything, even the things we hate, even the things that hurt us, even the things um, that we stand against. And there's nothing wrong with standing against things. There's nothing wrong with protesting things. It doesn't mean if we are open to understanding them that we're going along with them. We want to welcome them and see what they have to say and where they're going. The guest house. This being human is a guest house. Every morning a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Thank you, Ina. Isn't it amazing that Rumi uh, wrote that in, uh, in the 11th century, I believe. Can you imagine that Rumi knew about the focusing attitude, um, that, uh, that idea that the inner uh, is the between, that we're welcoming these guests inside us, the malice, the sorrow, and, and outside of us. It's both the same process of welcoming 
welcoming. And the promise is that, um, that they are guides, that all of these things that we might want to lock ourselves away from are guides from beyond. They'll help us to grow. So that's a wonderful entrance into this topic that's so important of the focusing attitude. The paradox is that uh, Jean discovered that all of these wonderful skills and, uh, and approaches and understandings and philosophy are completely um, nullified without this attitude. So you can have years and years and years and years of experience and whatever, whatever. I know this as a psychotherapist. I mean, you'd have billions of years of, of training and uh, without the focusing attitude, it does nothing. And the focusing attitude is the vehicle. It's this welcome. It's this interest. It's this openness this vehicle of connectedness and the vehicle that allows forward movement to happen. So it all depends on this attitude. What are we going to do if we don't have this attitude? Everything depends on having a, uh, an open and um, receptive attitude. And I feel like, ah, ah. Just wait one second until I say my thing, and how dare they? And I may not be saying that. I may be very polite. Oh, and tell me more. And inside I'm saying, oh, you must be kidding. What do we do when uh, we know that we need to be open and we're closed? We know we need to be receptive and we're anything but receptive. Well, the thing that's sort of strangely paradoxical is that focusing requires this attitude and it also produces this attitude. So that's a funny kind of thing because sometimes when you take the steps of focusing like pausing, like listening inside, like really looking at the other person, just really looking at each other. Something happens inside. Something opens up inside. So there's this reciprocal nature of focusing, requiring this attitude and producing this attitude. Of course, it's not that simple. So we're going to sort of go into more of the complexity of it. First, um, what is a, an, an attitude is a strange amalgam of lots of things that makes a kind of force field. It's a kind of air that we breathe. It's something that we might not notice. It's implicit, but it's determining everything. It's something that, that directs how we are toward the other, toward life, toward ourselves. It's a disposition. The attitudes determine the meaning, delineate the possibilities, make it safe or unsafe, determine one's access to creative thinking. They are infectious. You know, somebody with, with what, the, what sometimes the young people call a bad attitude or attitude uh, is infectious. Somebody with a, a generous, um, enthusiastic attitude, that attitude is infectious, like the air that we breathe. Attitudes are both something that are not in our control and something that we can take up or cultivate. So that's another strange little twist there. You know, we can't, we can't just make ourselves 
feel open. We can't just make ourselves feel anything. And yet we can cultivate in ourselves. And we'll talk more about how we, how we do that. Cultivate in ourselves the openness and curiosity that we need. I just want to give you a few ways that we can step out of one for force field of attitude into another. One way that we can um, reach for a focusing attitude. Breathing. Let's all do that. Sometimes it just takes a breath. When somebody says something that triggers you and you're uh, a breath will help. A pause will help. Re-entering your body. And of, all, of course, there's lots of complicatedness about all of these things. Just re-embodying re yourself, reincarnating yourself. Oh, here I am. Sometimes remembering our values, our concepts, our ideas are really important to us. To remember, if I remember, oh, curiosity, oh, that's going to do something. Can, can, I, can I be interested here? I remind myself. And then listening to ourselves, of course. Like I say, I remind myself and say, be open and you'll find out some surprise. It, and myself says, oh, you must be kidding. Shut up and leave me alone. I just want to hide in this corner, right? So we can remind ourselves and, and ourselves don't always listen. So then we have to sort of, even in the middle of a conversation, listen to ourselves, even just put our hands there and say, oh, yeah, that was hard. Okay, all right, we're here, we're okay. Listen to ourselves. And then listening, really listening to the other person. It's amazing what a channel changer that is when we can do that. It's a kind of mindfulness, really listening to what the person is trying to get at or what the part of ourselves is trying to get it. We're always working with those two, those two sides, the parts of ourselves and the parts of the system that are outside of ourselves, um, what we call outside, but we're all connected there. We'll come back to that because now I, I want to transition us into the, into the second part of this, uh, of this topic, which is us and them. And the attitudes we have when we're experiencing us and the attitudes that we have when we experience them. Us goes with the focusing attitude of receptivity and openness and welcome. We welcome us. Them goes with a kind of shutting out, a kind of narrowing down, a kind of closeness. Us goes with a curiosity. Oh, who are we? Them goes with, I don't want to, I don't even want to know from you. I don't want to know. Something's going to be taken away from me. Something's going to be foisted upon me. The goal of this training is that we can meet themness with usness. There are many wonderful stories about, I'm thinking of a story that, that um, about somebody who was kidnapped, uh, somebody that I knew that was kidnapped and uh, was meant to be killed and, uh, and this couple just acted like, oh, we're going to teach you our songs. Uh, let's eat together. And transformed 
this relationship and was able to meet a kind of us-ness even in the face of, of danger, of themness. I mean, Martin Luther King did that, right? That all of the themness coming at him, he, he was able to transform into, oh, we humans, we Americans have a big problem here. Many of our heroes are able to turn themness into usness.